Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Let me begin by welcoming our dear friend, Prime Minister Netanyahu and his team to Kenya and indeed to the African continent. This is a very historic trip for him, but also for us. It's the first time in over two decades that uh, an Israeli Premier has set foot on African soil. And it is remarkable that on that account alone, we are honored that uh, one of the countries that he has chosen to visit is Kenya, which attests to the strong and enduring relations between our two nations. As I'm sure most of you are aware, this trip holds uh, even greater significance for the Prime Minister because uh, on this day 40 years ago, just across in Uganda, we had a hundred Israeli commandos who risked their lives to liberate hostages from the death grip of terrorists. As a country, we stood with Israel both in practice and in principle as they carried out their operation in Entebbe in 1976. And indeed, as a country, we also paid the price for many of our people who were subsequently killed in Uganda by Idi Amin as a result of the support that we gave. With the large scale success of Operation Entebbe, goodwill eventually prevailed over evil, right over wrong, and today, indeed, as we remember that heroic undertaking and the valiant efforts of those, including the Prime Minister's own brother, it should be a source of incredible encouragement and hope to a world that is increasingly standing together to counter the callousness and cruelty of terrorism, something Kenya and Israel have always done together. So indeed, on that account, I thank the Prime Minister for honoring our country with a historic visit at a very significant time. And indeed, it is fitting that this that the historic security cooperation between our two countries, which is a priority concern for both of us, and as they have done for years, the Prime Minister and the Israeli people continue to extend invaluable support to Kenya, helping us build capacity and to bolster internal as well as regional security. We are ongoing talks about how to strengthen and expand that cooperation so that we can gain from Israel's expertise in cybersecurity, amongst other things that we also discussed. Prime Minister Netanyahu and I also discussed other areas of mutual interest, agriculture and water and its related elements, health, and these projects these are areas that we wish to continue to benefit from the indispensable technical support that Israel continues to give. And indeed, Israel earlier this year agreed to increase the number of students that they will train, especially in the Agricultural and Irrigation Initiative from 30 to 45. We'll be flagging off a number of those students today. And uh, we will continue engaging to ensure that cooperation in these developmental areas continues in a sustainable manner. We also had the opportunity to uh, discuss the issues of Israel and the region as well. And we, as a country, continue to encourage peace talks to be held between both the Israelis and the Palestinians, and I believe in the spirit of friendship, we ourselves, with our own limited experience of a crisis in 2007 and 8, demonstrated the importance of dialogue amongst leaders, especially when their lives of their people are at stake, and I believe that 
that same dialogue can help us get a way forward in resolving that particular issue. Kenya, without doubt, is committed to supporting a peace process in whatever way she can, and we continue to see Israel as a critical partner, a friend, an ally, which is all the more reason we desire peace in that region and in that part of the world. Finally, we have just also witnessed, as we concluded our official engagement, the witnessing and the signing of a couple of agreements that will see us cooperating more closely in areas of health and immigration. The agreements will allow us to build the capacity of our health systems and professionals in the area of emergency preparedness and resource, as well as specialized medical services. Our immigration agreement will see the abolition of visa holders, of visas for holders of diplomatic passports in our two countries. And these agreements build on 50 years of cooperation, and I am confident that with their implementation, we will find more ways of cooperating and the relationship between Israel and Kenya can only grow stronger. We also discussed ways and we agreed that there is need also to see how we can get to have Israel re-establish our relations with Africa. And we think this is important. We think that the world has changed. The nature of the global problems that we now share are different from what they were some 30 years ago. And we need to partner with each other. We need to be able to deal with the security threats that we have together. And we believe that there is need for us as a continent to once again begin re-engaging Israel on a more positive basis with an understanding that our partnership can help make this world that much more secure. And this is something that Kenya will continue to push to see how Israel can regain her observer position at the African Union. And I believe that this is not just good for Kenya, it is good for Africa, it is good for global peace, it is good for partnership, and we can together, as I have just said, resolve issues through dialogue. You cannot resolve issues unless you have the capacity to talk to one another. We must be in a position where we can engage because it is through engagement that we find solutions. And this is something that Kenya is very keen to see. So as I conclude, Prime Minister, mine is once again to say that we are truly happy to have you here look forward to our continued partnership and we look forward to even further engagement as we move forward for the mutual interest of our two nations and for the prosperity of our two peoples. Welcome Prime Minister. Thank you. Thank you. President Kenyatta, I want to thank you for uh, your gracious hospitality and your, uh, your deep friendship. It's wonderful to see you again so soon. And this time in Kenya, after the moving ceremony we had in, uh, yesterday in uh, Uganda and the subsequent summit meeting with you and uh, six other leaders of African countries. I said it yesterday in Uganda, and I want to say it here again in Kenya. Israel is coming back to Africa, and Africa is coming back to Israel. Uh, I uh, am excited to be with you today for several reasons. First, we've had an enduring relations for many decades, beginning with your late father, whose grave I visited today in a, in a very moving ceremony. We know his qualities uh, as a visionary, as a leader, as a founder of modern Kenya. Uh, and we also remember Kenya's assistance in the, the rescue mission at Entebbe. Our pilots landed here afterwards. And in retrospect, we know that this was not merely an act to save innocent Israeli hostages, but it was an act that dealt a, a devastating blow to international terror at the time, yet we are engaged in the resurface, uh, resurfacing of a new form of terrorism that threatens all our countries. Uh, 
and we must join forces in this. We discussed it at some length, and I may say that uh, I think we see eye to eye on the nature of this problem, and I think Africa and Israel uh, overwhelmingly see eye to eye on this. And therefore, I welcome your remarks on helping us to restore observer status for Israel and the AU. This is a concrete goal, and I think it tallies with our desire to uh, join with African countries, create a new partnership for security uh, and development. Uh, that partnership is so natural here in Kenya because Israel and Kenya are natural partners. We face uh, common challenges. The first among them is, as I've just said, terror. We all remember the horrific uh, carnage in the Westgate shopping mall in the Garissa University. Uh, innocent men, women, children hunted down by bloodthirsty murderers. And tragically, we in Israel have also experienced such uh, attacks on our own soil against our own civilians. I have to say that the terrorists see us all as one enemy. And that is why we must remain united in our common war. We are. Uh, and I know that working together will help us defeat uh, the scourge of this terror even faster. And when I say working together, it's Kenya, Israel, and other African countries that have an equal stake in defeating the forces of this radicalism that threatens our, all our societies. Now, alongside these common challenges, uh, Israel, and Kenya, Israel and Kenya share common opportunities in technology, water, agriculture, cyber, much more. Uh, you know, Israel is a small country. Uh, it was founded without any natural resources. The only natural resource we had was our, our brain and our heart. And we, we've learned to do a lot, to do more with less. We have less water, natural water today, substantially less water than we had at the founding of Israel, but our population has grown tenfold and our GDP per capita has grown 40 times. But we don't have a water shortage, we have a water surplus. It's all because we use technology, we do more with less. The same is true of agriculture, the same is true of energy and so many other areas. We are more than happy to partner with you because we believe you have the same potential. We believe that Africa is uh, a country, a continent on the rise, and the rising tide will help everyone. A rising tide lifts all ships. And working together, we all stand to benefit. And people, citizens of Kenya who are listening to this, should know that the practical result of our cooperation can be greater prosperity, and greater security for each and every one of them. This is something that uh, could not happen without your leadership, uh, President Kenyatta, and without your friendship. And I want to thank you for both. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much. Maybe just to come to specifics, in particular in security, because we share so many concerns with this country, and also to extend the same to the Prime Minister, just to go into details, what Kenya stands to gain in this? Kenya stands to gain a lot from our security cooperation with Israel. Kenya has already gained a lot. We can say that from training to um, 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 strategic uh, thinking to uh, assistance, especially in the use of technology uh, in the war through shared experiences. Israel, as the Prime Minister has said, has faced this challenge much longer than we as a country or region uh, have. So therefore, we can, we can really practically learn a lot from Israel's experience uh, we, they're helping us uh, in, 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 in training, they're helping us uh, uh, in, in, in equipment, but most importantly, as the Prime Minister has said, one area where Israel has made tremendous, tremendous uh, strides and major leaps forward is especially in the use 
of technology, uh, not just in the security arena, which is the one you're more interested in, but also in other sectors, in water, in uh, agriculture. And this is one, one area indeed today we are flagging off a number of students who are on their way to Israel to benefit uh, from that particular uh, uh, aspect. So um, our partnership is there, strong in intelligence sharing, and we will continue, as I was said earlier, finding more ways in which to strengthen uh, that partnership, that collaboration between Israel and Kenya, but also between Israel, our region, and the African continent in facing the challenges of um, terrorism, which is ultimately the greatest threat to the stability, security, and prosperity of our continent and indeed of the global, uh, um, the world at large. The only thing that uh, I can say is you ask, can we go into details? The answer is we did, but I'm not sure it's practical or yeah. useful to go into uh, such detail at this point in public. I will say one thing, which I think is not fully understood. There is a, a raging battle of terrors from uh, ISIS, from Al Qaeda, Boko Haram, Al Shabab. Uh, all these groups are attacking uh, our world and Africa, where Israel can and has helped and will help more is in one, in many areas, but one area that will make sense to all of those listening to us is that if you know in advance, if you know in advance that an attack uh, is going to take place and you can preempt it and you can prevent it, that is a tremendous and direct assistance to the saving of lives, innocent lives. Israel is doing this um, across a very wide canvas. Uh, and we, are, we will share, uh, cooperate our intelligence with our friends in Kenya and Africa. Adoni, Rosh HaMemshala, האם אתה שבע רצון מהתהודה של הזוכה הביקור הזה של... שלך באפריקה, בעיקר נוכח העובדה ששוב אתה צריך להתמודד עם פרסומים שנוגעים להתנהלות שלך בתחומים אחרים. אני חושב שהתעודה שהביקור הזה זוכה באפריקה היא עצומה. אנחנו רואים את זה בכל מקום. אני חושב שגם שמענו כאן דבר מאוד חשוב מנשיא קניה, שאומר בצורה הכי ברורה שהוא וחבריו, שעימם נפגשתי אתמול, מנהיגי אפריקה, יפעלו להחזיר את ישראל למעמד של משקיף בארגון אחדות אפריקה. יש לזה משמעות גדולה מאוד מבחינתנו. אפריקה היא מדינה עם 54 מדינות. האפשרות לשנות את הכיוון שלהם והיחס שלהם לישראל זה שינוי אסטרטגי במעמדה הבינלאומי של ישראל. זה מתחיל במקום אחד, במאמץ הזה שהנשיא הגדיר אותו. להביא את ישראל למעמד של משקיף, אובזרבר, בארגון אחדות אפריקה, ואני חושב שזה דבר בעל משמעות. יש לזה תעודה כבר עכשיו באפריקה, אבל אני חושב שתהיה לזה תעודה גדולה מאוד בהמשך ביחסיה הבינלאומיים של ישראל, והניסיון שלנו להביא בעצם למספר גדול מאוד של מדינות שתומכות במדינת ישראל. The question is moving forward in terms of the cooperation that you expect between Africa and Israel. What are these issues, particularly in terms of cooperation between the African Union and Israel after these years of difficult relations? Thank you. Well, you're right, and I think I alluded to, me, to it in my statement when I said that, uh, yes, we have had difficult uh, relations as a continent with the state of Israel. But like I also said, the world has also changed. And we cannot live in history. We need to be able to move to the future. We need to be able to address ourselves to the challenges of today. And the one clear fact is that the single biggest challenge that we face, not only as a nation, not only as a continent, but as a community of nations, is the threat against 
our security caused by these uh, deranged people who believe in no religion, but who threaten the livelihoods of innocent men, women, and children across, across the globe. This threat is a threat that has a direct link on our own capacities to achieve our social economic agenda for our people. We can't be able to achieve the kind of growth rates, the kind of development that we seek for our people unless we can secure our nations. So it would be foolhardy for one to sit back and say that faced with those challenges, that Kenya, that Africa cannot engage Israel in this particular issue. That is like an ostrich burying its head in the sand. And we don't want to be that way. We need to be able to look into that future. And that is why I said it is critical not for Israel. The importance is not for Israel to be recognized by the African Union. It is critical for us to be able to partner with all those who see this as a challenge and who we share a common position. And we must partner together because uh, this is not a battle that will be won by any one nation. It is a battle that will be won by the international community coming together. And the only way we come together is by engaging. And that's why I strongly believe it is critical for us to reevaluate our relationship with Israel and with the state of Israel, given the challenges that we on the African continent especially are faced with today. You mentioned the fact of Israel being coming back as a status of as an observer to the AU, which is a great thing. You're also talking of a changing world or the world that has changed. Now, we know perfectly well the reasons why some embassies in this continent were closed, why Israel is not, doesn't have this status at the AU anymore, although tens and tens of countries do have that status. Now, when we see this new romance of going back towards the future again between Israel and Africa, which is for me a natural thing, uh, those countries, I mean, in this changing world, the countries that were against it or damaged the relations at the past, uh, do you expect them uh, to do that again? And now uh, is Kenya uh, going to react if that happens? And the same question, what is the question, Mr. President, if you think that the enemy of Israel in the world is still here, in the Arab countries, Iran, they will try to calculate the Roman that will develop, the Roman new one between Israel and Africa. Thank you. I think just to repeat what I said, refusing to acknowledge the challenges that we face is uh, burying your head in the sand. And we've got to recognize that, uh, like I said, the world is changing. Israel today has much better relations with her immediate neighbors, probably better than she has ever had in her history. That is happening. Why should we on the African continent be the ones to say that uh, we know better than those who are in the region. I think it is only obvious that the challenges that exist require us to partner. And it is my hope and my belief that people will be able to recognize this. People will be able to say, yes, there is no nation, there is no community that doesn't have a history. But it is those who are able to learn from their history and develop their future that succeed, those who live in history, unfortunately, are never able to move forward. So I believe it is time for Africa to be able to move forward. And this is something that uh, we intend to champion. Mr. President, I will say one thing. Africa has no better friend outside of Africa than the state of Israel in the practical needs of security and development. There may be other friends, uh, and there are, but I think none of them uh, <coughs> exceeds Israel in our uh, proven capacities in those areas and in our desire to put our experience to the common benefit of the African countries that we see are struggling against the same uh, adversary and the same enemies who want to destroy us and want to destroy you. So we see ourselves in league with the African countries in order to secure their future, uh, both in seizing the opportunities of tomorrow, but also in 
fighting back against those who would take us to a, a violent and dark past. So this is a natural partnership. It's not something that we make up. I think there is a process of change. Just as it's changing, things are changing in the world, things are changing in the Middle East, things are changing in the relations between Israel and many of our Arab neighbors, a similar change is undergoing, uh, is now undergoing uh, our relations with African countries who understand what I've just said. Uh, I, I believe that uh, this will be reflected in a growing number of African countries who will realize that their interest, and I would add also their values, are uh, served best by this rekindled partnership uh, with Israel. And I'm very excited and very proud to have the opportunity as Prime Minister of Israel to, on the Israeli side, to steward and shepherd this uh, transformation as are the African leaders who are doing the same thing on the African side. I think it's a historic change for the benefit of both our peoples. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellencies.